there everyone welcome to Poor Painting with Ron. I hope you've been really well since the last time we saw each other. Well today I'm going to do a pour that I haven't done for a little while and that's a balloon pour. Now that the mix for a balloon pour is quite a bit different to the mix you use for any other sort of pour painting and if you haven't um, seen any of my balloon pour videos before I'll go through the recipe really quickly in a minute again for you but I'll also put a link at the end of this video to some other ones that I've done where I go through things perhaps in a little bit more detail. But today I'm going to change things up a little bit and just modify how I do my bloom pours today um, because uh, yeah, I have had trouble in the past when I've been doing the longer rectangular canvases um, and I thought I'd, I'd spread out the pillow paint a little bit more at the beginning than I usually do. But you'll see what I have in my brain as we go. But anyway, today I'm going to be using this 40 by 80 centimeter thin edge canvas. And just like I usually do, I've taped off the back with painter's tape and put in some giant push pins that I got from my local office works store. So that's the canvas I'm using today. Um, generally, I find round canvases or square canvases that are easier to do bloom pours on when you put them on the spinner. It's just the way physics works on the spinner. Um, the further you go out from the middle, the faster the canvas spins and, uh, uh, and uh, the quicker your paint leaves the canvas. So the edges tend to, on long canvases, tend to stretch out faster than the middle does. So it's a little bit tricky, but hopefully the way I'm going to do it today will um, make things a bit easier for me. But we'll see, it's an experiment. But anyway, the mix for a bloom pour, I'll just go through it quickly. There's three parts. You need a, a pillow paint at the bottom for your paint to spread out across. Then you have your colour layer with the paints. And then you have, the third layer is a cell activator that generates all the lovely lacing effects that you get. So the pillow paint, all it is, is a, um, a wall paint, acrylic, water-based wall paint, white. That's all it is. You don't mix it with anything. Um, then the color, uh, color layer, I'll show you my colors in a bit. The colors are mixed with the pouring medium that you make using varnish and untinted wall paint. So the polyurethane varnish I use is a gloss varnish by Joe Sonia's. So that's the varnish I use. And I just use an untinted wall paint from... Um, Bunnings, my local hardware store. So they come in different varieties, but I found the, the extra bright works really well for me. Well, some people use one that says deep base, but I use extra bright. So I use three parts of the untinted wall paint to two parts of the varnish. So and the parts can be as big as you like, and they can be small cups or grams or milliliters, but three parts of the paint to two parts of the varnish, and that's your pouring medium that you mix into the colors. Now, when you mix your colors, use a nice high, um, a nice quality paint with lots of pigment in it because you tend to spread it out quite a lot. So when you mix it with your colors, um, you use one part of your color to two parts of your mixed up pouring medium. Make sense? Anyway, the colors I'm using today are Joe Sonia's and Joe Sonia's colors. And I wanted to go with like earthy sorts of Outback Australian colors today. So rather than a bright yellow, I'm using their Turner's yellow. And then I'm using Burgundy and Brown Earth. We'll see how that goes together. And then the cell activator on the top, not really cells you're making, they're, they're, it's lacing effects that you're making. Um, and to get that, I use Floetrol. This is the Floetrol, Australian Floetrol and Amsterdam paints. Amsterdam paints tend to work the, the best to get your lacing effects. So I'm going to use two colors today for my lacing effects. I'm using black oxide and what's this one? Naphthol deep red. So I'm using the two today 
and I mix the, them one part of the paint to two and a half parts of Floetrop. Some people like a thinner mix, others like a thicker mix, but I'll go somewhere in the middle. So two and a half parts Floetrol, one part of the paint for the cell activator. Anyway, feel free to look at some of my other videos at the end. Um, if you weren't quite sure of the mix that I'm using, I go through it all in, in quite detail in other videos. All right, well, let's get started. Well, here we are all ready to go. This is actually two days later than the last bit of the video. I did the painting and it didn't turn out very nice. So I decided to have another go, just changing a, a couple of things. Uh, most of the colours I'll keep the same. I'll still use the, the brown and the Turner's yellow and the burgundy. But this time I'll put in a little bit of um, red as well. And I won't use the red as a swipe color. That, that didn't really look nice at all when I did it. I'll just use this black as my swipe color. So we'll see if it works out any better. I hope so. If it doesn't, you won't see it. So, uh, so far, so, so good. Now, the first step is putting the white on the canvas. Now, usually I just put the pillow in the middle and then spin it out over the edges. Um, but I want to change it a little bit this time and spread out the paint more over my canvas first before I spin, see if it works any better. Last attempt was promising. So I'll just get my paint. Where is it? Oh, here it is. No space on my table now. I've got the, the dud painting drying. See how it dries. Someone might like it. I don't. But anyway, you'll, we'll see. All right. Now I'll pour the paint on the canvas and then I'll spread it out a bit using a large palette knife. going. That's probably more than enough. I'll just cover, put the pop the lid back on and then get it out the way. Okay, now my super duper palette knife. Now I'll spread it out a bit. A bit like icing a cake. I do still want to keep perhaps more of the paint in the middle than on the edges because you really only get the, the lovely lacing effects when you spread it out or spin it out. So if you don't spin it, they just stay small. A lot of paint on the canvas and uh, a lot of it will be spun off right now I'll just go and wash my palette knife before it dries on and then we'll come back and put the colors on right now I'm back now I'll just torch the surface a bit get rid of some of the air bubbles without cooking the paint. That's it. Air bubbles make little white spots on your painting when they pop. So they pop through the colour. Alright. 
Now, last time when I did it, I just put one straight line across and that was really boring. So I thought I, I want to do like an earthy sort of agate sort of rock, rocky sort of thing. <laughs> sort of, if you will see. Well, bit of an idea. Um, so I might do a squiggly line and maybe with a couple of branches popping out just to break things up a bit. So I'll start with my dark darkest colour first. Now I'll do the squiggly line. Maybe sort of like so. Just something random. A lot of that may get swiped off. I hope I have enough colour because I used a whole lot yesterday. Just enough. Just enough of the brown. And I'll do the burgundy next. Swiping will be interesting. I'm trying to keep the straight lines. Right. Then I'll do the red. The dried bit at the top. Don't want that in my painting. Um, why not just a bit of a wiggly shape? Why not? I didn't want too much of the red. And then the yellow. So I wanted a sort of an outback sort of feel. Perhaps to the painting. Looks like I'm putting sauce on a hot dog, doesn't it? Okay, here we go. Now, the interesting bit. Now, the swipe colour, well, as I said, was the Amsterdam paint with two and a half parts of, or one and a half parts of Floetrol. I forget what I say now, but anyway, just look back in the video and you'll know how much I used. Some people prefer a thinner sort of mix. I prefer slightly thicker. The, the walls of the um, lacing tend to hold together a bit better. But I'll just put it on my wall scraper tool here. And then I'll just get my playing card, the long side. And I just dab it in. Get a good good coverage. Now you do want to press reasonably hard to drag the paint, but you don't want to push it all the way through your pillow. And I'll just drag it out like so and clean off the card. Now I may overlap things. Ooh, something happened there. Uh, now, just get some paper towel, making a mess. I'll 
do that one again. So I don't like the white I got in it. That's better. looking pretty interesting not a great deal of color up there but mm, we'll, see, we'll see how that spins out okay now I'll just go in and wash a the few bits and pieces and then we'll come back and we'll spin it out but I do like this this wiggly pattern across the canvas and I just hope it spins out really nicely without losing too much of my ends but yeah time time will tell okay now this is my spinning out pool it's just a, a cheap wading pool children's wading pool I got from the local toy store um, you can get smaller ones like a doggy a doggy pool is smaller if you only do smaller canvases now some of my canvases are quite thick so I've got this upturned bucket in the bottom just to raise everything off the bottom of the pool a bit and then I've got um, a spinning wheel underneath. It's just a, a plastic banding saw from my local art store. And then a banding saw, banding wheel. I think they use it for pottery and ceramics and stuff. And then I've put this board on the top just to give me a bit more room and some double-sided tape to stop my canvas from flying away. Now I'll just get my canvas. There is still a lot of paint on this canvas, so I may end up losing the ends of my design, spinning it out, because if you leave too much paint on the canvas, it'll crack when it dries. Okay, now we'll see if we're in the middle. More or less, I think. way a bit I think we're in the middle right, we'll just spin it slowly see what happens paint is moving so I'm you losing losing that
looking. That's interesting. It's looking more interesting than the last painting. off the end here. do it too much more. think of that one but it's certainly better than the last one I did if I spin it out too much more these are all these um, will get too squishy in the middle because they're all moving that way that's why I wanted to spread the paint out more on the canvas before I started spinning so I might keep it at that otherwise I just lose the design I'm just hoping I've got enough paint off my canvas. Now there are some air bubbles there. Let's see what I can do there. There's a huge one there. That's an air bubble, it might be a lump of paint. All right, cool. I'll let it drip for a little bit and then I'll bring you in for a closer look. Okay, so this is the painting. Hopefully, you can see it. I'll just come down, go here first. See the lacing effects are, are very pretty and I do like the black and white lacing. This bit is a bit smudgy but yeah nothing I can do about that now. There's a little bit of an odd mark there too that yeah, I can't do anything about either, but I don't think it spoils the painting in any way. I think overall it's, it's very lovely. So what did you think of that one? Is that a technique you'd like to try? Um, I think this one turned out rather nice, a lot better than the last one I did the other day that I won't show you. I do like the wiggly pattern and the interesting lacing effects that we got. There are a few little bits in there that I don't like, but yeah, as I say, if you're mostly happy with the painting, don't try to fix it because you'll only wreck it. And I'm mostly happy with this painting. I just hope that I haven't left too much paint on the canvas and that it'll crack when it dries, but 
yeah, the next few days will tell. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the, the video today and you were inspired to try something yourself. Um, as usual, if you like what you saw today, please take a moment to press the like button. And if you'd like to see more of my content, please take a moment to subscribe. Hitting the notification bell helps too. Anyway, have a great week ahead. Enjoy your painting and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Happy painting!